have you been considering buying a mobile manufactured home? I know some people really think it's a bad idea, but nobody really understands your finances and what your personal situation is. And you're just looking to get some more information on it. Well, I have a treat for you because I'm going to be talking about several ways you could buy a mobile manufactured home. And as a special bonus, I have downloadable spreadsheets for you for each one of these types of properties. So that way you can make the best decision for yourself because information is key. So let's get into it. All right, before we start talking about any kind of manufactured homes you could buy with land or resold or brand new. The first thing you're really going to want to do is make sure that you get a good lender behind you first. Sometimes when you go on these lots, especially when you're buying that brand new, they're going to say, oh, don't worry about it. Come take a look at our houses and we'll worry about the financing later. I don't want you to do that. I want you to be very prepared before you start looking at any of these houses to know exactly or a good guesstimate of how much your payment is going to be. And that way you have a better understanding on how much of a house you can afford. You're going to have a hard time finding a lender that does manufactured homes. And I've even heard some lenders say, because they don't know how to do it, the VA doesn't do manufactured homes. And that couldn't be further from the truth. You need to work with a lender that is very proficient in understanding the rules and all the ways to get a manufactured home approved for yourself. I will be completely honest with you. When it comes to manufactured housing, the interest rates on those are going to be higher than they typically would for a traditional style home. That doesn't mean that it's out of the question for you to purchase it. As a matter of fact, today, interest rates have come down a little bit. The best way to do that, I always tell everybody, first check with your local credit unions in the area. A lot of them do manufactured home lending. So you're going to meet with them first. Then you're going to go to other mortgage brokers that work specifically with manufactured homes. And then I'm going to tell you to work with your local bank to see if they do manufactured homes. I want you to get at least a minimum of three different lenders that you talk to so you can find somebody that is really great working with you. And you may even like the terms that they gave, but you may not like the mortgage lender. It's kind of like real estate agents. You just may not get along with the person. Make sure you're working with people that make you feel comfortable through the whole entire process. And that includes real estate agents and home insurance agents as well. You don't have to be stuck with one because they're the first ones that pick up the phone. You want to get the best rates for yourself and you want to make sure that you get the best person that will work with you and listen to you and understand you. You're hiring them. Don't let them bulldoze you or talk you into the, something you don't want. All right, now that we get that whole lender thing out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about if you're going to buy a house that's already established on a piece of land. So this would be considered a resale property. It's listed on the MLS. You've seen it on realtor.com or on zillow.com and you want to go look at it. You've already been pre-approved from the bank. Now you can purchase this without a buyer's agent representing you. I'm a real estate agent. I will tell you that right up front. I would strongly suggest you don't do this, but this is what I would tell you to do if you weren't going to be using a real estate agent in your transaction. First, you're gonna to wanna to take a tour of this house. When you're going to go look at the house, I want you to ask the sellers for their property disclosure. If they're working with a real estate agent, ask that listing agent for the property's disclosure, meaning that the seller has filled out a form that tells you everything that's been done to that house since they've lived there. Any kind of damage that's been done to the house and they've repaired it, anything that's happened with the air conditioner, septic system, how much the taxes are, how much their homeowner's insurance are. Everybody's property disclosure in each state looks a little bit different. I'm just listing off the things that I know that are on the property disclosure here in Louisiana. It's like a little diary of everything that's happened to that house since they've lived in there. And it's great information because it gives you a more of an inside look or behind the scenes of the house you're looking at. So when you go into that house and you're taking a tour, I want you to go look in either the electrical panel or into the kitchen and find out the information sheet. So all manufactured homes have this information sheet. It is required for them to in order to sell it. And you're going to take a picture of it because you're going to give that to your insurance agent. If they do not have it, it's going to be a problem for them to sell it because the Lender is going to require it and the insurance agent is going to ask for it. While you're touring this and you've already gotten a picture of the plate, I want you to start doing something that most people don't do and that's look up. And the reason I'm telling you to look up is this is where you're going to look for any kind of water stains on the ceiling. And it's very common, especially where the seams are or if it's connected like a double wide, that there is leaks there. So check to see if there's any water stains on there or if there's been any repairs for water stains because nobody ever batches up that ceiling correctly. <laughs> Every time they try to, you know, 
fix that popcorn ceiling, you could always tell. Or if there's any fresh paint where they're trying to cover up any kind of water stains, just take a good look. And then I want you to really take a look at all around the corners to see if there's been any water intrusion. And you're going to look for any evidence of mold or anything like that. This is pretty common in bathrooms too. So when you're going into the bathroom and into the kitchen, look under the sinks and if you see any warping in the cabinetry or any mildew, just kind of take a look at that and kind of make those observations for yourself so you can decide if this is the house you want for yourself. While you're in there, Ask if you can take some photographs so the way you can jog your memory of the houses that you're looking at. And if you like everything inside and everything's checking off, make sure you go outside and see if you have access underneath the mobile manufactured home. So what you're looking for is access where the skirting meets. So that way you can take a look underneath there. And you're probably going, what the heck do I want to see under there for? I mean, there's probably vermin, raccoons, who knows? <laughs> Scary stuff. Well, I don't want you to crawl under there. I just want you to see if there's like lots of debris, like dry leaves, anything that looks really wet and mushy that would cause kind of mold, those kinds of things. Just take a look at it, observe it to see if that's something that you see for yourself. And make sure you document that and put that down on the spreadsheet. This spreadsheet, yep, this one right here, the one that I created. This is where you're gonna put all your information for the houses that you're looking at and you're gonna put the ones that you like, you know, you're gonna rate them, right? You're gonna be putting in the address of the house and the subdivision that it's in. You're gonna be putting the price, the age, the square footage, the bathrooms, the bedrooms, the pros and the cons. So if you happen to see a bunch of stuff underneath that, bottom there that's full of muck and gunk you make sure you put that in the cons area because you know that is a negotiating tool for you when you're going to negotiate the price of the house and it can also be one of those things that later on when you have your home inspection you're going to have a home inspection right trust me on this one if you're not going to use a real estate agent make sure you hire a home inspector because you want them to document the fact that there is a bunch of debris underneath there and you want to have the sellers remove that debris that's underneath there and if they're not going to you want to negotiate with them to reduce the price of the house. Just just giving you a little FYI. Like you want to save some money. And plus, I don't want to crawl under there. I'm sure you don't want to crawl under there either. <laughs> Have the sellers clean that up. But this spreadsheet will help you when you're going to look at a bunch of different properties because it happens to me all the time. Whenever I'm looking at a bunch of houses, by the end of the day, I'm sitting there going, what house was that? Was that the second one or the third one? Maybe that was yesterday. So this way you have a good documentation and you have all those pictures there that you took with your cell phone. Okay, now you've picked one out. You're going to go ahead and put a purchase agreement in and you don't have a real estate agent. So next you're going to try to find somebody to fill out that purchase agreement for you. The way of real estate works a little different than it used to. So you can find a real estate agent that you could pay a small fee for just to fill out the purchase agreement. They will not represent you in the purchase of the house. All they're doing is filling out the contract. You're going to have to shop around to find Find somebody that will do that for that fee. You also can hire a real estate attorney to do this. Now that fee is probably going to be a little bit higher, but you also can work with a lot of title attorneys in the area and they will charge a fee for the purchase agreement and they'll charge a small fee to pull up any kind of title work that you want to have done before the purchase agreement is accepted. So just know that, that that's an option open to you. Every state is a little bit different. So you're going to probably have to do a little due diligence ahead of time if you're not planning to work with a real estate agent for this transaction. But no matter what, if you're buying it off of the MLS, you make darn sure that that seller fills out a property disclosure for you to look over. You're going to want that because if they withheld information about that house and you don't have it in writing, you have no leg to stand on afterwards if there's a problem that comes up and you can't sue them because you don't have that property disclosure filled out. So get them to fill out that darn property disclosure. It's super, super important. All right, but you don't want to go that route. You want to buy brand new and you want to get your own piece of land. Well, let's talk about it. Okay, step one, you know what you're going to do first, right? You're going to call a lender first. You're still going to have to get a pre-approved, not just for the manufactured home. You're also going to have to get pre-approved for the land itself too. That's going to be two separate loans, especially if you're going to buy the land first. Your lender also is going to let you know if you're going to be able to roll the manufactured home, the brand new one, in with your piece of land. Now, if you already have a piece of land, you're going to need to have a survey done on that piece of land and you're going to have to find out if it is suitable for a manufactured home. Not all areas are going to allow you to put a manufactured home on it, even if you own it, even if it belongs to you. It may not be zoned to have manufactured homes on it. Now, if you are looking at land first, I will strongly urge you to find a real estate agent that is specialized in buying land. There are so many ins and outs 
of buying a piece of property that has never had any kind of structure put on it ahead of time. So look for a real estate agent that specializes in land. Now I'm gonna be giving you my land spreadsheet. All of these spreadsheets are gonna be on my website. You can find the little tab that says spreadsheets and you're gonna be able to click on any of the spreadsheets that you need. I'm also gonna be putting a card to buying land right here. It's the best video I have about purchasing land and it will walk you through the whole entire process about buying a piece of land because that would take another 20 minute video. <laughs> so I couldn't put that all in here. But let's just say you have your piece of land and you wanna buy a brand new one. When you walk on the lot, those are people that are salespeople and they're wanting to sell you the most expensive house that they can. So you already know how much you're approved for. Keep that zip it. Don't tell them how much you're approved for. Start looking at all the models that are within your budget so you can see for yourself. Now, the second thing that I'm going to tell you is they have a finance office in there. I'm not telling you to not go talk to them. Definitely go and hear what they have to say. Have them put the numbers on the piece of paper so you can compare that with the lenders that you've already spoken to. Now, when you're on that lot, that salesperson is going to tell you all the ins and outs of every single model they have on there. You're going to see all the upgrades you can get on there. And then they're going to talk to you about something called a cross mod right? So you're going to think that it is a, a cross between a manufactured home and a modular home. And they'll tell you that they can put modular components in there, but it's not a modular home. The words that they use, cross mod, don't actually mean cross between modular and manufacturer. What it means is a cross modern. And they know that because they're trying to confuse the public and charge you more for something that shouldn't be <laughs> charged more. It's an upgrade. All they're doing is making it look, look more modern and adding a few more extras. Now you can always add as many extras as you want, but I just want you to be very careful when you're going in there that they use certain kinds of verbiage that you think that you're getting one product, but you're really getting another. Some of the upgrades that I think are always a good idea is like the roofing material you want to make sure that they're not the three tab shingles, but they're the architectural shingles. That's one. And any other upgrade that you decide that you want to do, just make sure that they're charging you the right amount of money because again, they're salespeople. So if you're looking at the vinyl floors, make sure you have a general idea of how much vinyl flooring actually costs. So that way they're not overcharging you. And the same with the carpet and anything else that's in that house. Also, when you're there, find out about all of the warranties that you get with those manufactured homes and how long those warranties last. On your spreadsheet, you're going to write down the warranties and how many years on each one of those models so that you know. And every manufacturer that makes different manufactured homes, they have different types of warranties. And your state also might have a new home warranty act. So you may want to check that out as well. So you can know exactly how much is covered for your manufactured home if you're buying it brand new. Oh, and if we rewind a little bit, if you happen to buy a manufactured home that's only a few years old, maybe like two or three years old, you want to ask those sellers if it's still under any kind of warranties. That's important. Now, when you're buying anything new, it can be pretty exciting. And I know that you can get kind of wrapped up in the whole thing. It just take a step back. Don't sign anything the day of. That house will be there tomorrow. So I want you to take the a step back, Go back home, look over your spreadsheets, start doing your pros and cons of each model that you look at, then find another lot that's selling manufactured at homes as well the next day. So that way you can do a little comparison of each one. I don't want you to get stuck at one office and think, oh, I have to work with them because there's so many other distributors out there and I want you to get the best deal for yourself. They're trying to do a job, which is sell you something. And I, I don't want you to get all wrapped up into it. I've, I've done that with all sorts of things before. And the best thing I can tell you to do is take a day, think about it, and then come back. Uh, but I'm going to stress this. If you do talk to their finance department, make sure you're comparing it with the lenders that you've already spoken to. And then I want you to take those loan agreements that they, you got from the dealership itself and take that over to the people that you've already talked to so they can break down the fees and, and explain to you exactly what's going on with their loan terms. And I just know that because I've done this for quite some time, the people that are generally on the lot don't necessarily give you the best deals. I'm not saying it can't happen. What I'm saying is out of my personal experience over uh, many, many years, it just seems that like those credit unions and your local lenders are going to do a much better job at getting you the better rates and saving you a lot more money than the people that are working 
at, on those lots. You always got to compare and contrast. You got to. <laughs> now that you found yourself a house, you've gotten everything you need for your land, you're going to have to have it delivered. And you're going to be working with your lender to find out if you can roll in the manufactured home in with the land so that you only have one payment instead of two payments. A lot of people decide, and this is what you're going to have to do for yourself, you're going to have to decide if you want to have two separate mortgages, one for the land and one for the manufactured home, or if you're going to have the ability to roll it into one complete loan where you can get a traditional 30-year fixed rate mortgage. I also want you to put in consideration you're going to have to budget for your sewer, your utility connections, like water and electricity, and you're going to have to put in for a driveway as well. And don't forget the delivery costs of the manufacturer at home itself. If you happen to live in an area that has a lot of trees, that can make the delivery actually cost you more because they're going to have to take down some trees and branches in order to get the house in the, to the location. These are just all things you need to be aware of. So make sure your budget is a little bit more flexible if you're deciding to do something like this. Again, I have a spreadsheet for this too, as well as the land, and it's all on my website. But let's talk about if you're going to buy a manufactured home in a community or a park. Let's talk about that. Some of the best deals when it comes to manufactured homes are in parks. And it's great because you can get yourself into a really nice manufactured home and the mortgage payment isn't nearly that much money. It's actually a heck of a lot less than renting. When you're going there, in most cases, in most states, you cannot have real estate agents representing you. In a lot of states, they do have real estate agents that will represent you, but in most states, because it's not attached to land, you don't own the land underneath it, a real estate agent can't represent you when you're going in and looking at some of these homes. So you have a sales agent that's usually up front that shows you the houses that are available for sale. I want you to be aware, if the house is older than 1976, you're not going to be able to get financing on this. And the other thing you need to know, because it isn't attached to land, the mortgage interest rates on those are a lot higher than they are for homes that are attached to land. And it's because of this, they consider it to be a more more high risk mortgage. So that's why you're paying a lot more. The loan terms for those are over a shorter period of time. And your mortgage lender will be able to tell you what those terms are. Now, when you're looking at these, again, this is one of those times you don't have a real estate agent. So you're going to be doing your own kind of like due diligence. You're going to ask them if they happen to have a property disclosure. Since this isn't listed on the MLS, they're not required to, but it still at least ask. Most of them will have some kind of property disclosure available to you to, for you to look at. And of course, you're going to go take a tour of the inside of that house. You're going to take a picture of that panel, like I told you earlier, and then you're going to start looking up and you're going to start looking down. So again, on the ceiling, make sure there's no water spots. Start looking at the floor. There's no mold or water intrusion. And again, look underneath to see if there's any kind of debris or fire hazard underneath the manufactured home itself. And this is one of those times that I want you to like try to tippy toe away from the uh, sales agent and see if there you can talk to any of the neighbors in find out if the park is someplace you want to live. So ask them if they've liked their living at the park. Ask them how much the increases of rent have been for that specific park because sometimes they have a cap. So you're going to want to ask the, you know, the neighbors and you can ask the sales agent as well. You're going to also want to see how well is that park being maintained and ask the neighbors if they, you know, fix things on a regular basis or does it get put to the wayside? These are important, especially if you're going to be living there for several years. You want to make sure that they maintain that park correctly. Now, one thing you need to be very, very, very aware of, if you're not living in a co-op park, meaning that all the residents in the park have a part ownership of it and it's being run by an individual owner or a corporate investor, you have to ask, is this a co-op park or is this an individual owner park? And the only reason I'm telling you this is because a co-op park works much like condominiums. Everybody has a stake in the park and everybody maintains the park. You have more levelized payments that happen with your rent. Now, if the park happens to be with an individual owner, or a corporate investor, they have no rules to stop them from raising your rent as much as they want. Most states do not have any rental protections for you if you're going to be moving in there. I just want you to be aware of that. And it's one of those things you should go ahead and put in the cons list immediately. But if it's something you're still considering or it happens to be a co-op park, ask them on average how much the rent does go up in that specific park. And I want you to put this in the back of your head as a red flag, right? If you happen to talk to somebody and they said, well, they raised our rent three times this year, that's something you need to be 
acutely aware of because who's to say they're not going to raise it three more times next year. There's nothing stopping them from doing it. So when you look at that spreadsheet, make sure you put down the rents. And in the pros and cons section, make sure you put down how many times a year that they have raised rents or how much they've raised it over the last five years. Find out if you're going to have to pay property taxes. In some states, I've heard from people in the comment section that they actually had to pay property tax. Like I've never had to deal with that, but just find that out. Now, I know for a lot of you living in a manufactured home park, is going to be the best, most affordable housing option for you. And I totally get that. It's going to save you on rent and you have a home of your own. And I completely understand that. I just want you to be very aware of what can happen in some of these communities. But make sure you put that all on the spreadsheet. Now, just to let you know, all of these spreadsheets will be on my website, christinasmallhorn.com. You don't have to do anything for them. There's no catch. You don't even give me your email address. Just go straight to my website, download each one of these spreadsheets that apply to you and what you're planning on doing for purchasing your manufactured home. But if you're still unsure what kind of manufactured home you want, if, whether you buy it brand new or with land or without land, but you still don't feel like you got enough information, I have a ton of information right here within these videos. Just watch them. It will take you hours. <laughs> Oh, and I'll stick the one about land right here. This is a really good video. Oh, and in the comment section, let me know which one you're planning on buying because I'm interested. I'm doing a little survey on it for my next video. My name is Christina Smallhorn, your real estate whisperer. And I tell you all this because good real estate information matters.